this baby's born in the street. It's going to be on everyone's ring camera. That'll be so embarrassing. And the doors are open. They reeled me in. I had a failed home birth and it was one of the best experiences of my life. And I don't mean failed as in cancelled last minute. I mean, I was pushing, huffing gas and air on the way out to the ambulance. My name is Jade. I'm a mum of two. I have a two-year-old Ruby and a nine-week-old Freddy. And I think the best way to tell this story is to start with Ruby's birth. I'll just give a quick overview and then why I just thought that my failed home birth was one of those empowering best experiences. So when I was having Ruby, I really wanted a natural birth. I wanted to go into labor naturally. I went to 41 weeks and I was advised to be induced and I said no. She was also measuring quite big, so I got all the big baby talks, blah, blah, blah. Then my waters broke and I didn't go into labor spontaneously within 24 hours. So I felt like I was kind of pressured into having an induction and the induction led to an emergency cesarean. And yeah, so basically everything went wrong um, and I didn't love the way we were treated while we were in the hospital and I just felt like everything was really just out of my control. Nothing of my kind of birth preferences was followed and I just had a really negative experience overall and I just felt it quite traumatic to be fair. So fast forward, uh, 13 months later I got pregnant with little Freddie here and I knew from the start that I wanted a home birth. Um, I've been looking into them and I just thought like this is the way that I'm going to get the birth that I want and not feel the same feelings that I felt last time. I think I had an overwhelming feeling of just feeling like I really just missed out on something. I was kind of obsessed with birth and watching other people's births on like YouTube and everything and I just felt like birth happened to me instead of something that I really participated in in like my emergency cesarean so this time I knew I wanted things to be different so I was definitely all on for going the home birth route from day one pretty much so from the start my midwife had told me that you know they would recommend for me to go into the hospital to have constant monitoring blah 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 and I said no I'm not interested um I knew that's what they would say and I yeah that just isn't how I wanted to go because I knew with all of the like constant monitoring and everything I just thought there's more chance of them exaggerating little things and just end up going down the same route again. So first scan 12 weeks everything went perfectly, 20 weeks scan everything went perfectly. I also had three interuterine exams so they put like a little probe up there. That was because I'd gotten the whole way to 10 centimeters and was in the pushing stage with Ruby before it went to uh, cesarean so but that can lead to your cervix being weakened so they checked to make sure that everything was fine there which was all good so far then one of my later midwife appointments so you start having appointments again around like 28 weeks um, and that was all good until maybe I'm gonna say around 36 weeks um, I had a midwife appointment with my community midwife and my blood pressure was a bit high then I think she let me go and the next day I had someone from the home birth com team come out and it was still a bit high so she recommended for me to go into the hospital and just have everything checked out. I couldn't go that evening because I had no one to watch Ruby so I said I'd go the next morning which was a Saturday or a Friday morning so my partner would be home to look after our toddler. So I went to the hospital, blood pressure was still high, it continued to be high, I was there for like five hours while I monitored and yeah so they gave me some blood pressure medicine and I had to take that and do my own blood pressure um, a couple of times a day. So that was fine, they still recommended for me to be have the baby in the hospital and I still said no. Also along this time um, he was measuring big, just my bump was measuring big, like four weeks ahead my whole pregnancy. Um, Ruby was 9-11 when she was born, so I just, I knew he was going to be, be a big baby anyway. So yeah, I just wasn't that worried about that. Um, they wanted me to have some more scans and I said I didn't want any more scans because I just felt more scans would lead to more interventions and that is just not the route I wanted to go at all. So we were up to like 39 weeks now. I was doing my blood pressure and it was high and then it was high all day, even with my medicine. So I went back to the hospital, with all the monitoring, blah, blah, blah. And I just ended up upping my dosage. I had to go back in the next day to get something. Can't remember why, but I had to go into the scheduled care team. And while I was there, they asked me would I get another scan. I said no originally because I just didn't want the big baby talk. I got all the big baby talks with Ruby and I've already had a few of them with my pregnancy with Freddy. So I knew he was gonna measure big in the scan and I would be just told all of the scary big baby things and I've already heard them, I know them, the shoulder dysplasia, blah blah blah, didn't want to hear that talk. But 
The doctor told me that because um, of my blood pressure, it could have been putting some pressure on the placenta and they just wanted to check the cord and the placenta to make sure that everything looked like it was still flowing properly. So I agreed, they brought me straight in for a scan that day. And lo and behold, I had the scan, everything looked fine and he was measuring quite big. This was now, I think, three days before my due date. So they said he was measuring in at 12 and a half pounds, which I thought was dramatic and it was dramatic. Um, but yeah, so that's what they said. And the doctor came to give me the big baby talk and I said, you know, I've had this talk several times, this pregnancy, several times last pregnancy, I'm comfortable with the risks. I still want to go ahead with my home birth. Someone from the birth choices team called me to talk me through all of these things and all of the risk factors and my individual risk factors from previous cesarean and the blood pressure and big baby. I had all the talks. I felt very well informed and yeah, I wanted to go forward with this home birth. I did everything in the lead up to my pregnant to my birth. I did the dates, Clary Sage, um, the the circuit whatever you call the circuit, already forget everything. Um, I did yoga, I did everything. Pineapple, tea, raspberry leaf tea. I was like, I'm getting this baby out of me because my main aim for this pregnancy was natural birth. All I wanted to do was push a baby out. My due date came and went. Um, I ended up going four days over. I was being monitored, but I didn't really want to go like into the hospital loads. On the day that I went into labour, I had a call from the hospital that morning. I was on calls all the time. I swear, if you ever want some attention from the NHS, just get pregnant and try and do something as they have guidelines. The day that I went into labour, I got a call that morning asking could I come into the hospital and they wanted to do like a wellness check and I just, I just had a feeling that he was going to be born that day. So I just said no, I didn't want to go in. I wanted to be at home, I wanted to be comfortable, I wanted to be, get that oxytocin going and I just did not want to go into the hospital so I said no thank you. Um, I'm just going to stay at home. Then around midday, my contractions like started properly. Um, not, I wasn't in full blown labour, but they were starting to become more consistent. Um, it reached a point where it hadn't actually reached before, like with the Braxton Hicks. And I was like, hmm, I'm really have an inkling that something is going to happen today. So um, it wasn't until around dinner time, so around like five o'clock, that things were like really starting to ramp up a bit. Like they were still fine, I could still work through it all fine. Um, but we were eating dinner and I had to like stop and breathe through contractions and things. So after dinner, I called the midwives and I let them know, I was like, right, I'm getting contractions every like three to five minutes. Um, I called directly through to my home birth team and they were like, right, that's great. They said like, are you happy to hang tight for a few more hours? We don't think you'll be going that quickly. I said, yeah, that's fine. So a few more hours passed, um, I put Ruby to bed. I insisted on putting Ruby to bed myself because I was afraid in case I was gonna, in case something happened, I wasn't gonna be able to put her to bed on my own for a while. So I put her to bed, um, probably shouldn't have because I got a little bit frustrated because she wouldn't go to sleep and the contractions were getting a bit like intense. So maybe a mistake on my part, but anyway, Ruby was asleep and then I got my bloody show. Uh, never got that last time so i was like oh this is new exciting i called the midwives back this was around like seven half seven and i said i had my bloody show and my contractions are happening like every two to three minutes now um, i had one of those little contraction timer apps and it kept telling me go to hospital go to hospital and i was like right well that's not the plan but good to know that things are amped up so they said right that's great we'll have someone out to you um it won't be immediate but we'll have someone on their way soon so we got the birth pool blown up, we stuck all my little um, positive affirmation cards, tea lights, we had everything set up all lovely. I will put in a little video of how it looked. Uh, it was really chill. I was playing my like labour playlist. I had the um, a comb, just a wooden comb that I was squeezing and that was doing like wonders helping me. Uh, at this point I was just walking around and then every time a contraction hit I would lean over something, I would squeeze the comb and yeah just work my way through it. So then the midwives came out around like half nine, I want to say. And they came out, I was in the corner, I was leaning on the birth pool, I hadn't actually gotten into the birth pool. Hi sweetie, hello little man. So where was I? Midwives came here, I was in the corner and they first asked to see my birth plan, which was great. Um, I had it all wrote out and they spent like a good 20 minutes studying it, looking through everything, taking it all in, asking me questions. It was really, really good. I feel like that filled me with so much confidence. Um, I hadn't met these midwives yet, so they 
there's like a big enough team in the home birth team so when they come out to your house to do the general checks near the end they try to send out as many different people as possible so you have more of a chance of running into the midwife that will be there in the night but i just didn't happen to um, my midwives were called abby and ali um they were both quite young and they were just the best ever i was so happy with them um yes they like studied my birth plan asked me questions uh really took it all in and then is where it started going wrong um i feel like they felt really bad about like coming in and being like the bearers of bad news but they came in did my blood pressure and it was just going wild they did it like four different times and it just wasn't getting under control whatsoever so they recommended that we transfer into hospital i originally said like no i i i don't want to i just want to wait and see what happens but it was becoming apparent that it was like only going to get worse from there i agreed to go to the hospital and they called in the ambulance and the condition of me going into the hospital was that well the plan was that we were going to go in see the doctors um, hopefully they'd just give me some more medicine or something and then I would transfer into the um, birth centre that's on the site. Uh, it's all midwife led and like a lot nicer, less clinical than being in the hospital. So we agreed to that. They called the, ho they called the ambulance to come out. Um, so we were going to get like blue lights, ambulance to the hospital as quick as possible. Um, my partner called his sister and told her to ask her to come out. She was waiting on standby anyway to come and look after Ruby. Ruby was in her bed asleep, so she just came in and like, stayed with her. Um, and But that is when everything kicked off. So as soon as the ambulance got here, um, Alex went to open the door, my partner opened the door to the ambulance. And one of the midwives went with him and one of the other midwives went into the kitchen to start gathering their stuff. Um, my waters broke as soon as everyone left me. I was still in the corner. Um, my waters broke and I immediately just started pushing and I was like, freaking out a bit at this point. Um, I felt like I was really in control of my like contractions and everything until the whole like, until we were told that we were almost gonna have to go into hospital. Um, I wasn't told I had to go into hospital. My midwives really made it feel like it was my choice even though it was the obvious choice. My waters broke, I started shouting. I was like, hello, someone come and help. Um, I was like, baby's coming now, I was like panicking. Um, I was shouting, making all these noises at this point. Uh, I was not like calm and relaxed. Um, but my midwives were like, remind me of my breathing. They were just really good for helping me stay under control. As soon as they reminded me to help with my breathing, like that would help get me through each contraction. And then even if I like cried or whatever in between, it was fine. Uh, so we have a big step into our front door and the ambulance were like, well, we're not gonna be able to get a stretcher or like the bed in through that step. So I'll have to walk. At this point, I hadn't stood up in a while and I was just like, there's, there's no way. If I stand up, this baby's gonna fall out and like, it's not gonna happen. So the midwives got the gas and air out. Um, I started puffing on that. It was a godsend, honestly. And I stood up and I was hobbling out. I had, one of the midwives checked me. I didn't want any like checks, like vaginal checks, um, unless needed and at this point it was needed they asked permission they said it would be okay if we checked just to make sure that the baby isn't actually coming right now and she checked she's like right I can't see the head I think we're good to get to the hospital and they felt that was still like the best um, you know the safest situation to be in I had a dressing gown wrapped around my waist I had the gas and air um, the midwife was helping support me out Alex was running around like a madman trying to gather all of her things I did not pack the bags very well. I only like half packed them because in my head nothing was going to go wrong, which last time I didn't think I was going to have a C-section. I was like, well, that's not going to happen. So I really should have prepared for everything in this case, but I just didn't. <laughs> so I ended up going to the hospital with no shoes on or socks. I literally just like hobbled out barefoot. No one really noticed. Um, I was on the gas and air. Um, I, it was around like, I think we got an ambulance at half 11 at night. I literally had to stop before I got an ambulance because I was having another contraction. It's like, oh my God, this baby's born in the street. It's going to be on everyone's ring camera. That would be so embarrassing. Um, but no, it, w it wasn't born on the street, thankfully. I got an ambulance. We got Alex in and the midwife and started on our way. The journey was awful. Um, Gas and air was, again, 
the best thing ever. I remember I turned around at one point and winked at Alex and the midwife thought that was really funny. <laughs> but I was like on the bed, strapped onto the bed, but I was kind of flying about everywhere. It was just crazy. We got to the hospital and the doors are open. They wheeled me in. The receptionist was a bit rude. She was like, oh, we didn't know you were coming, but they did, they called ahead. And then they were like, oh, home birth this way. And I thought she was rude. And Alex picked him up but not too, so it wasn't just a gas in the air. That was the only rude person that we met in the whole experience. So they wheeled me into one of the delivery suites and then all of a sudden there was, everyone was there. There was all these doctors and I don't know what most of the people were doing. But my midwife was just there in my ear the whole time telling me everything that was going, everything that, who was what and what they were doing. And the doctor was down there doing whatever. And now I was obviously free to push as much as I wanted to. Um, before then I felt like I was trying to hold it in. And if you've ever been in labor, it is not easy to try and hold in when your body wants to push. At this point, I was getting like guided pushing. Like I told them when it was happening, but also they were like, push. And I was, I was like, I give it all I can. It's, it's not happening. They said they had put the monitors on at this point and his like heart rate was going fast or something. And they said he's starting to get stressed from his head being squeezed because he was right there in the birth canal at this point. Like, not, I don't know, birth canal, he, he was there. That I, I, they got me to like touch his head and stuff and that was a surreal experience like, oh my god <laughs> there's a little person there and they said um we think we're gonna have to make a small cut um is that okay and i was like freaking out a little bit but the midwife just like kept me calm and they injected the area before they cut so that was nice because you know i feel like i felt it less then if than if it was just to be unnumbed and tear naturally i don't know never had a normal tear but yeah, so I had an episiotomy and then I did like a big push and came out and it was straight on my chest. The midwife before that was like taking my shirt off and getting me ready and he was on my chest and it was just like, oh my God, so surreal. I never got that experience with Ruby. Like that's one thing that was really sad about. She came out and I heard her crying and like I was just handed her. They called Alex over to cut the cord and a few minutes later I was just handed her like all bundled up and wiped down with a hat on. I think that was like the the part that I really wanted, that like rush of emotions and they put the baby on your chest and they're born. <laughs> yeah, so that was like amazing. And then um, I remember feeling a little bit frustrated. I feel really bad about this, but I was a little bit frustrated with the baby <laughs> because he was screaming so loud and people kept trying to talk to me. I didn't know what was going on because like everyone still looked really concerned. I was like, oh, we're done. But no, we weren't. Um, I was bleeding a lot and I just couldn't hear anything because he was screaming in my ear and the midwife was trying to tell me everything. But yeah. So they asked her to give me the injection to get my placenta out quicker because I was bleeding so heavily. And I was like, yeah, whatever, do whatever at this point. <laughs> I pushed the baby out, I'm, I'm, I'm good. So they got the placenta out and then um, the doctor said that she was gonna push down on my stomach. And I said, okay, and she did. And, oh, it was the worst experience ever. I felt like a gush of blood from that. And then like a minute later, she did it again, but she didn't warn me this time. And I was like, like screamed or whatever. And my midwife was like, no, you need consent every time. Like she was on it every time there was like anything. It just felt like I had like a little guardian angel there. She was just amazing. So they ended up, the doctor had to go up and was like trying to scrape everything out. Um, Cause they said that I had some of my membranes still stuck up there. So the doctor was going up and pulling everything out and pushing everything. And yeah, there was a lot of pain, a lot of screaming, but I've kind of already forgotten the pain. And I had my midwife just making sure I was informed, making sure everything was consented to, making sure that I was like part of the process and I wasn't just having all this thing happening to me. Everything had calmed down a little bit, but I was still bleeding quite a lot. And I was told we're gonna to have to go into theater. And I was gonna to have to get a spinal and all this stuff, but I just, I wasn't that worried at this point. We went into theater then, still had, you know, midwives with me. Alex was holding Freddie, he was chilled. And everything was pretty calm then. I had to get a spinal uh, and that was, that was fine, that was whatever. The doctor was like full on up there, like pulling bits out and I could see them pulling bits out. It wasn't until like another midwife came in and was like, why is there no screen up? Yeah, so then they eventually put a screen up after I'd already seen like everything, but I'm not that squeamish. I wanted to see everything. 
and I got to see my placenta this time. I never got to see my placenta last time. And I was sad about that, so I was, I was glad I got to see it this time. The script and membranes out, they thought that maybe some of the placenta could have been embedded on my scar. Still not entirely sure if that's what happened or not, but they got out as much as they could and then they put like a little balloon full of water up there and they gave me some, all sorts of drugs to try and make everything contract and make my uterus like shrink down so it would stop bleeding. So that was all done. Then when they were I was really, really nauseous the whole time. That was like the worst thing about it. I felt really, really sick and I kept telling them I felt sick and they were giving me all the like anti-nausea things, but I still felt really sick. And when they were wheeling me back to the delivery suite, um, yeah, I did throw up, but I felt like I was gonna throw up. So I asked them for something to give me a little bow. And I got back to the delivery suite and then I had to be monitored for the next like six hours or something. That was awful because it was just boring. And I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything in case I had to go back into a uh, theater. Because if I had to go back in, they would have had to go back through my C-section scar or around it and yeah, like make sure that it wasn't actually embedded in the scar. But thankfully I stopped bleeding just enough. <laughs> we were there for hours and hours, started to get like the feeling back in my legs and everything. Um, I, you know, the midwife stayed there the whole time until like the very end, she left for like the last hour because she was like, I'll just give you some time on your own. They asked if I wanted, they said like, you know, the baby's starting to get hungry at this point. Um, so this was like a few hours into it. I was like, yeah, I'll bring him here, I'll feed him. And they were like, you know, are you sure you've lost a lot of blood? I lost like over two liters of blood, though it was like, class four hemorrhage or something. And they said like, no, we, we can get you some formula. Don't put too much pressure on yourself if you're not good enough for it. Like no one will think anything, we'll do everything we can to support you breastfeeding, like once you're able. Uh, I was just like, no, just give me the baby. We'll see what happens. And I was able to get him on and feed him and everything was good. I don't know, Ruby never had any formula like our whole life. So I guess I felt like I shouldn't give him formula. I know I shouldn't feel guilty about like little things, but I really want to get our breastfeeding journey off to like the best start possible. And I felt getting him on and getting things moving as quick as possible was the best way to do that. So we did and it was fine and he latched on well. And yeah, I was really proud of that that I managed to feed him straight away. And then the bleeding finally stopped enough so that I could go to the recovery, like the recovery ward and I had to stay for an extra like 24 hours or so. When it came to going home the next morning, I FaceTimed Ruby and I was just really wanting to get back. I'd never ever left her before. The only time I'd ever gone anywhere without her was one night out, which I was like, only missed like an hour of her being awake and my couple of scans that I had for Freddy. It's the only times I've ever been away from her. So it was really hard and I really wanted to get back. So I was determined to seem as well as possible. So I got up and made my own breakfast and I got a shower and everything. So when the doctor was doing a round, seeing like who could be discharged, I was like, yeah, I did this and I did that. And like, I did feel awful, but not like, you know, didn't feel like I was gonna die or anything. It was kind of like, right, well, you can stay here and possibly have a blood transfusion or you can go home. So I went home, Freddie was perfect. All of his checks were amazing. Um, I had a slight temperature for a bit after, so I had antibiotics, but I was fine. Finally got to go home. And I can do another video about recovery from birth and the high blood pressure and everything. I'll leave that somewhere separate because I don't want this to drag on for too, too long. Why did I find this to be such a positive experience, even though so many things went wrong and I had to go into theater and I still had a long recovery process? Honestly, I think it's because one, I pushed out a baby. <laughs> that was my main aim. Like, I think it took me like a day to reframe everything so instead of having a failed home birth it was like oh i actually had a successful vbac i think because i advocated for myself so much during pregnancy and about the birth and i did my own research and i like stuck to what i wanted to do and i did like the risk assessments myself you know taking obviously on board all of the risk factors and i just felt like that was quite like an empowering experience my midwives being the home birth team was just the best thing ever because I felt like they were really on my side um, before birth and during the birth. Abby and Ali, he's amazing. Like I couldn't have, well, it just wouldn't have been anywhere near the like, positive experience I had without them too. So I think just being informed, having the support I had had and just advocating for myself and doing my own research and just giving it my all, tried my best to do the birth the way I wanted to, but still I wasn't just like silly with it when 
things started to like look more serious I followed the directions or the advice um, and yeah it led to I've had a really positive experience I look back on it like kind of fondly I only want two kids so I'm actually like a little bit upset that I don't get to give birth again I feel like I got to feel all of the like raw emotions and everything when I pushed out the baby and all of the things that like are associated with like a more natural birth I think my first birth happened to me this one it was it was me I did it all and I felt so empowered from it and yeah it was amazing <laughs> would I do it again uh, I think if I had the same risk factors I would probably still try and do a home birth I was to have another baby which I'm not but if I was I I loved being at home for as long as possible and even if it wasn't perfect I'm just glad that I got to do so much of it the way that I wanted to so glad that I got to advocate for myself and so glad that I pushed out my baby and yeah it was just a really really healing process overall so you know if you're feeling like the advice given to you by the doctors like i'm not saying to go against advice whatsoever but i'm saying make sure you ask all the questions that there is to be asked and make sure that you're making informed choices and that you feel like you're part of the process and not just that everything's happening to you and yeah if you're going to get birth soon i hope this didn't scare you um, and i hope your birth goes as well as I possibly can obviously things are unpredictable but I wish you a happy healthy birth and that you get a nice happy one of these by the end of it thank you for watching and I will have more videos to come um vlogs things about life with a toddler and a baby and yeah lots more videos to come Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. So just a couple of things I wanted to add to the video that I just forgot to mention. First, I don't think I gave my partner enough credit. I spoke a lot about the midwives and that's only because that was the thing that was different from this birth to the last. Um, my partner, he was amazing for both births. He made me laugh. He made me feel really, really supportive. And he was everything that I needed him to be. So I just wanted to add that in there too. And hello. And secondly, and secondly, just some of the stats. So obviously I said he was predicted to be 11 and a half pounds at the last ultrasound and he was 10 pound one. And for like how long everything took, I'd say contraction started ish around midday. Um, I felt like I was in active labor from around five. Um, midwives got there around like half nine, 10. We were in the ambulance at half 11 and then he was born at 20 past 12 at the hospital. So yeah, not too long overall. When things started going, they like really started going. And I think that is everything that I have to add for now. Um, yeah, thanks. Bye.